This video is brought to you by Squarespace. More on them later. Wheatley Crab isn't real and he can't hurt you. Wheatley Crab isn't real and he can't hurt you. Wheatley Crab isn't real and he can't hurt you. Wheatley Crab isn't real and he can't hurt you. Wheatley Crab isn't... <laughs> If you have no idea what's going on after that intro, you're not alone. We're all confused and we're floating on a rock in the middle of space, but today's topic is a crustacean sensation, the meme from Portal 1 slash 2 because it's technically a Portal 2 character but they're using Portal 1 assets. Don't worry about it. There was a crab and now he's a meme and now he's popular and people won't stop asking me about him, so I made him. Here's a tutorial. But also, here's a word from our sponsor, Squarespace. Oh wait, they don't do the segue, it's, it's me. I do the segue. See, as someone who's wearing a lab coat, I'd like people to take me seriously without putting in the effort. So if I want to have a serious business, well, I should have a serious website. But I'm not a web designer, so how can I make my own? Well, it's simple with Squarespace. The all-in-one platform where you, dear viewer, if you are not a web designer, can have your own website up in an afternoon. Whether you want to make a portfolio to showcase your artwork, or you want to start an online store, Squarespace has you covered with templates. And you can choose from over 350 top-level domains, that's, you know, the .com part, or, you know, choose something weird like .xyz, because, you know, you're different. And you want to stand out from the crowd. So if you want to stand out and save a little bit of scratch, you can use my coupon code MrVolt. So head on over to squarespace.com forward slash MrVolt and use coupon code MrVolt to get 10% off your next website or domain today. All right, let's get over to that crab tutorial. Okay, so let's get to putting together this here Wheatley Crab. As you can see, there are not too many parts. I tried to keep this as simple as possible. We've got the main shell pieces, the upper shell, which the only real significant difference between the upper shell and the lower shell is the lower shell has a six millimeter hole, so you could screw it onto a camera uh, tripod mount and it's got a little flat so that it can rest on the table because the legs are not exactly load bearing. We've got the LCD bezel. We've got the LCD bezel mount, and this also has a mount for our microcontroller. We've got the handle pieces, which I guess technically in this case are uh, arms and legs. We've got two upper lever arms and two lower lever arms. We've got two uh, longer mounting posts for the upper arms and two shorter mounting posts for the lower lever arms. You'll also need at least eight M2 by eight screws, itty bitty, a piece of 1.75 millimeter filament, which you should have if you printed this, unless you're one of those barbarians still using uh, 2.85 millimeter filament. If you're going for the electrical version, you'll need the Raspberry Pi Pico. So shiny and new, it's super cheap and awesome. And the most beautiful aspect of this design, in uh, my opinion, is the round LCD, which will make up the eye. You could, of course, just put a you know piece of plastic or something in the LCD bezel if you don't want to go the electronics route, um, but I think this will be a lot cooler and we'll get to installing that later. As for tools and some supplies, you'll need flush cutters or regular scissors will work okay. Some needle nose pliers, preferably ones with serrations for extra grip, a screwdriver. So I've got screws with a Phillips head. So I've got a little Phillips head screwdriver and possibly a chamfering tool, which I really love for deburring holes and uh, cleaning up 3D printed parts. Really worth getting one of these. You'll also need some super glue and you know how I like it. So the first thing we need to do is connect our LCD 
to our microcontroller. Now, if you've never worked with electronics before, uh, you will still be able to do this. I chose these parts and designed this to make this as straightforward as possible for someone who hasn't worked with electronics. If you can read labels and you've got the fine motor skill to plug things in, you are good to go. You don't have to uh, have an electrical engineering degree. I certainly don't. So we just need to plug eight things in. Now, one thing to keep in mind, for the most part, you're not going to see Raspberry Pi Picos with um, pins already soldered to the GPIO. So I did put a link in the description for a Pico um, with header pins pre-soldered if you don't have a soldering iron, which will save you time and money. But I do have a soldering iron, so I soldered this myself. So we need to make eight connections. And I'm actually going to leave this in the description because it's so fiddly to show plugging in these um, female headers into the pins. Most importantly, this LCD runs at 3.3 volts. So in this case, my cable harness, yours might not have the same cable wiring. Mine has the uh, VCC labeled um, with a purple wire. So we just plug that in to the 3.3 volt line on the Pico, not, let's see, it's a little hard to see, not the 3.3 volt enable pin. So one, two, three, four, five on the left. So that's one of the most important ones. And then of course, our ground connection, which on my wiring harness happens to be white. So that white wire can connect to any of the ground connections. And I did that right here towards the bottom. So I'll leave these connections in the description. And they're also uh, written down in the code as well. So it should be pretty straightforward. Only eight pins from the LCD to the Raspberry Pi Pico. So I'm gonna set uh, this unconnected one aside. Okay, so the next thing we're going to do is to mount the electronics into the eye assembly. So we'll need the bezel and the LCD mount. So first thing we're gonna do is attach the LCD to the LCD mount via some M8 screws. So I'm gonna take that, I actually don't need this right now. And I'm going to screw these into the inner set of four holes. So we've got, well, it's a little messy to see. So we've got outer holes and we've got inner holes. So the inner holes line up with the pattern on the LCD itself. And there we go. Now it is securely mounted to the mount. And one thing I probably should have done already is these two holes, that hole and that hole, are for attaching this to the lower shell. So I'm actually gonna go ahead and screw those in. Now, the Pi Pico also has uh, two millimeter mounting holes. In this case, we don't need uh, all four screws. I'm just going to screw in two. Just make sure you screw them in a diagonal pattern. Now we've got our completed eye assembly. Just plug this in real quick just to make sure it's still working. Please still work. There we go. I didn't crack it. Okay, so let's get to the mechanical assembly. We just need these shells and the posts. So the two longer posts go for the upper shell, which doesn't have a hole. We'll also need some super glue. All right, so each of these has a little flange part at the end, and this lines up with a little flat right there on the inside of the shell. So when you put it in, they don't pop in or anything like that. I could have, I could have designed that to, to be that way, but there's no time for redesigns. So they just stick out straight like that, and we can just super glue that in place. So I'm going to put some super glue on the inside of those flats and put the posts in place. All 
All right. And we'll just leave those to cure. We'll be back in a bit. All right, we're in the home stretch. The glue has dried and now we can start assembling our Wheatley crab. So to build the upper uh, arms, this just pops into here. And the leg has a matching hole up top. So it's a bit hard to see on camera, but this is a slightly square hole and the tip of the leg or the upper arm, whatever you want to call it, is also slightly square. It just pops right in there. I'm gonna super glue that later, but let's just do a quick fit. And we'll do the other one, like so. I'm trying to match the curve. It just pops in there, not super tight. And then this just pops into post. That's satisfying. Pop that one a little bit more. There we go. There we go. Ah, oh, so good click. Looking pretty good. All right. Bottom ones. Also straightforward. Get this in the right orientation. Yeah, so that. Now these holes are just a little bit too tight, which is why I've got my chamfering tool. Chamfer. I'm just gonna open that up a little bit. There we go. Now that is a nice snug fit. Almost there. All right. All right, so now I'm going to mount this to those two holes right here. These screws. Make that pop out a bit. Lost the leg. All right, so now in order to mount that, to the lower shell, we're going to take this filament and make four little rods, shat pin, I guess it's better to call them pins. Now, <clears throat> take our pliers, Insert those into the hole. And now we can line it up with the top, and it will just Snap. Snap in place. 